Hello and welcome to our daily Bible reading. We're continuing through the prophet of the prophet Isaiah and also John, probably reading the most famous chapter, definitely in the Gospel of John, perhaps in the whole Bible itself. So let's pray. Father, as we read your words, we may be familiar with these things, but help us not to be guilty of complacency and familiarity. Help us to see things that perhaps we've never seen before, even though we've looked at them so often. So I pray, Father, that you would grip our hearts with your word and shape our lives because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Isaiah chapter 47. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind flour. Put off your veil. Strip off your robe, uncover your legs, Pass through the waters, your nakedness shall be uncovered, and your disgrace shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called the Mistress of Kingdoms. I was angry with my people, I profaned my heritage. I gave them into your hand, you showed them no mercy. On the aged you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. You said, I shall be mistress forever, so that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. Now therefore hear this, you lover of pleasures, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. These two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments. You felt secure in your wickedness. You said, No one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray, and you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. But evil shall come upon you, which you will not know how to charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, for which you will not be able to atone. And ruin shall come upon you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries, with which you have laboured from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed, and perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many counsels, let them stand forth and save you, those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. Behold, they are like stubble, the fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No coal for warming oneself is this, no fire to sit before. Such to you are those with whom you have laboured, who have done business with you from your youth. They wander about, each in his own direction. There is no one to save you. So here, Isaiah is prophetically looking forward to the time when Babylon will become a world empire. And they will be the ones whom God uses to inflict judgment on Jerusalem for their apostasy. And yet, because they themselves will we'll explore the, the, the lengths of wickedness, they will be judged as well. Now, interestingly, and perhaps redemptively, we see that from the, the book of Daniel, for example, we see that Daniel was, was used by God to bring Nebuchadnezzar to an understanding that there is one God, the God of Israel. The God of Israel was not just the God of Israel. The God of Israel was the God of the whole earth. And Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged that. And so we see little, as, as is the pattern, in the midst of judgment, we see glimmers of redemption. And we will see this. And here, Isaiah has prophesied the humiliation of Babylon. And indeed they were. We can look back on history and see the, that, that in one night, they were, they were overtaken by the Medo-Persian Empire. But I'm jumping ahead in the, the chronology here. I said at the introduction of this uh, today's Bible reading that we're going to be reading 
possibly the most famous chapter in the New Testament and definitely the, the most famous in the Gospel of John itself. And when I say that, I'm probably exaggerating because I suspect that if I asked you what does John 3.16 say, you could probably tell me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You would know that, I, I hope. But do you know what John 3.15 says, the verse before it? Do you know what John 3.17 says? Now, the only reason I'm able to ask you that is because I'm familiar with those. In other words, the chapter itself is not as familiar as perhaps I'm thinking it might be. One verse might be, John 3.16. But yet, John 3.16 doesn't make any sense unless you get the flow of the chapter as well. Now, I'm, I mentioned in yesterday's reading the in John chapter 2, the turning of water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana was done so well in the series The Chosen uh, by Dallas Jenkins and his team. But so was this encounter, this John 3 encounter between Nicodemus and Jesus. And, and as Dallas Jenkins said, I think it's episode 5, 4 or 5, where Nicodemus and Jesus have this encounter here in John 3 that they needed, to, they needed to do episodes one, two, three, four with Nicodemus in them so that we understood the significance of this meeting. And it's done really, really well. So again, I'm just bragging on Dallas Jenkins' work and I'm bragging on The Chosen. It is outstanding. Jonathan Rumi, who plays Christ, has done an outstanding job. And let's read this now. This is the encounter between Nicodemus and Jesus which is where we get John 3.16 from. That's the context. Let's have a look. John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So let's just pause there. Uh, that's, by the way, John 3.15, which I, I just asked the question, how many know that? And we've already read this. We, we read this account in, in the, the first five books of the Bible where Israel had murmured and disbelieved God. They weren't trusting God and God sent uh, fiery serpents, they're called. In other words, the, the bite, the sting must have of their bite must have been like fire. And and, and many, many people died. And that's when Moses was instructed to create a pole and put a bronze, create out of bronze, a serpent on that pole resembling the serpent that had done the bite and have it rest on that pole, and which the only way it could have stayed there was for the pole to have looked somewhat like a cross. And today, if you look at the international symbol for doctors, it, that's the symbol. Look to that, Moses told the people of Israel, and you will be healed of your snake bites. You'll be healed. 
and they did and they were and that transaction in the Old Testament what is an, an example of trust or an example of faith they had to look at that pole with the bronze serpent on it and that simple act of looking was an act of faith and they were healed and Jesus is saying that the Son of Man he is the Son of Man that's a, a, a divinity term would be lifted up just as Moses lifted that serpent up and so now all we have to do to be saved from something far worse than a snake bite and that is the sin that contaminates our soul and condemns us for eternity all we have to do is look to Christ we have to look to him the one who died on the cross and trust him as our saviour so let's continue on now we come to this verse John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is right comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside and he remained there with them and was baptizing. John also was baptizing at Anon near Salem because the water was plentiful there and people were coming and being baptized for John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ. But I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. And there we have what, what I think is a, a chapter that has to be read as a chapter, not just as one verse, John 3.16, in order to get it. In other words, John is saying, this is no mere man. He is from above. That makes him God because he is, he is the divine title above all. This God who so loved the world sent God the Son to die for the world and he is above all there's the divinity of christ and that makes john 3 16 even more powerful to realize that god himself has laid down his life to redeem his wayward creation of whom i'm one of them and he's redeemed me and i trust that he's redeemed you as well let's pray father i pray that lord you would help us to appreciate the redemption lengths that you've gone to in you sending your son and in Jesus, you coming willingly at the Father's request. And that Lord, you have given up your life for us and now Lord, we can't possibly repay you, but Father, our heart says, Lord, we now wanna serve you willingly in gratitude for all that you've done. So Father, I pray 
bless those who joined with me now in this daily Bible reading. May their hearts be inclined toward you. And I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining with me today. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. That way you get the daily notifications. If you've got a question or a comment, leave it there in the comment section. I'll get to it when and if I need to. And you'll see me tomorrow for our next Daily Bible Reading.